the the idea for Rastafari Speak started germinating even before, even before um, going to Grenada in 1979, um, in March 1979, um, we started germinating uh, basically around Trinidad because when I looked at what was taking place in our communities and how the newspapers, the Trinidad Express, the, the Guardian, etc., the, the kind of propaganda war that was taking place against Rastafari people or dread and dreadlocks people on a whole, they were you will see all kind of um, backward statements. For instance, someone made committed a robbery, and you will see in the papers headline on the front page: "Man with Rasta hairstyle was caught for committing a robbery." Nine out of 10 times, these people were not Rastafari, um, was not practicing that Rastafari. Sometimes some of these people were using things like uh, mock heads and so on, and to uh, go and camouflage to commit crimes. But the media was not concerned about that. Um, the bourgeois media never concerned about investigating properly. So in fact, so they was given the Rastafari community um, a bad name. So when I arrived, went into to Grenada to serve with, at, with uh, Maurice Bishop in terms of uh, helping uh, in the Grenada Revolution at that time, 19 March 79, it was basically, I was at Camp Blunt um, in St. George's, just adjacent to the, to the Grenada market in St. George, George's. I was, happened to be, in the companionship of a whole lot of Rastafari brethren who were there giving their service at Camp Blunt as myself to the nation and to the cause of the, of the Greater Revolution. Nonetheless, there we were negative things, although the Rastafari community had stood behind the Nigerian movement and the revolution, the Democratic Revolution in Grenada. Um, there were negative things was coming back in terms of people who were looking at terms of um, the cannabis smoking and so on. And although the New Jewel movement and the People Revolutionary Government was not really uh, making the problem of, of, of ganja a problem, but people were thinking that the Rastafari or sell some of the Rastafari brethren, they were making the whole concept of ganja be a priority when it was not a it was not a problem within the community because no there were, no one was arresting people for smoking or smoking cannabis at that time there was none but one of some of the major people at the time who, had, who was called out and who came out to support the Greater revolution on the, on, um, on the night of the revolution we had a we had a prince danan and many others rastafari brethren and sisters who came out and supported the Grenada Revolution and helped initiate it. And at the end of the day, because they didn't have any media, they didn't have any voice to speak for, to speak for them, um, the, the media, um, the Torchlight newspaper at the time, which was a bourgeois newspaper that was um, in, in, um, being used previously by Eric Gary, who was the former prime minister then, they used that to kind of attack the Grenada Revolution using Rastafari um, as, as, as in, in a train up negative aspects that, that it may feel that would um, link Rastafari with the People's Revolutionary um, Government and with the revolution that was taking place. So all these was what made me be more conscious and start speaking to my brethren, um, Kimani Langa, we were doing a magazine at the time, um, a cultural magazine, he was editing, he was a publisher, and, and we were doing this magazine called Kamule, which was a cultural magazine that we were take, doing highlights from throughout the Caribbean on different events and things and people. And so from there, after talking to people like Kimani Langa, um, Shango Baku, and others, Rastafari, I knew that oh, it was a very important, so I already had coined the term Rastafari Speaks and just wanted a body of people who with like minds, um, who could come together to put 
this together uh, as, as a force. There were other newspapers, yes. Um, for instance, like Brethren in, in, in St. Lucia and Antigua, they were doing little newspaper, um, what do they call, um, you know, uh, copies, but not in a new, full news fledge that how Rastafari came. When Rastafari Speaks came, it came with a difference. It came with a standard because we believe that our certain standard because if we believe in Haile Selassie the first, if we believe in Rastafari and Haile Selassie to be our, 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 our teacher, we have to set standards. And we know the importance of newspaper. We know from the importance of, of propaganda, um, studying Marcus Garvey. And Marcus Garvey himself had many newspapers, including the La Nation, the Nation newspaper. He had the Black Man newspaper and so on. And these were very vital in terms of being able to contract, con, uh, contract um, the, the, the whole concept of whatever propaganda is taking place against you, what is taking place against the Rastafari community. So Rastafari Speaks came on, on, on the scene with that in mind. 